I'm so glad you're joining us here today for a reptile talk. Now here at the Cooper Environmental Center, we have many reptiles that we have here that are native to Ocean County. And this might be animals that you could find commonly in your yard or in the schoolyard. So I have some of my friends with me today to show you. But before I get to that, I kind of wanted to ask you, what is a reptile? Maybe think about that. What is a reptile? What kind of animals are reptiles? Well, let me give you a clue. Let's think of some things that reptiles have in common. First off, one of the things they have is very scaly, scaly skin. Uh, let's see, they also have something called, uh, they're cold-blooded. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about cold-blooded in a little bit. And most often they lay eggs. So these are some of the characteristics of reptiles in general. Can you think of any reptiles? How about a reptile that has a shell on its back? A turtle, that's right. How about a reptile that slithers through the ground? Snake, awesome. Uh, a reptile that has really big jaws and big teeth? Well, if you said alligator or crocodile, You've got it. Uh, lizards or reptiles. And if we took a time machine back in the time, we could go visit the dinosaurs who are also reptiles. So those are a few examples of some reptiles. Now I don't have any dinosaurs here today and I don't have any alligators, Whew. Uh, but I do have some turtles and snakes to share with you. So let me get started with one of my friends. Take a look at this little guy. He's being a little bit shy for us today. He's not used to doing his talks like he always is. But check out his face. And I want you to check out his colors. There's red and yellow. And let me look at his belly a little bit. Look how bright yellow that is. This turtle is called an Eastern Painted Turtle. Painted turtles look very much like Mother Nature took a paintbrush and decorated this turtle with all sorts of bright colors. Now painted turtles commonly live in a pond or a lake, so they're an, actually an aquatic turtle. They can be out of water, they breathe air just like you and I do, and they have to hold their breath when they go underwater to swim. But they really prefer to be in a pond or lake because that's where they can find their food. Now if he'll show us a little bit of his feet, Oh, thank you. He's got little feet that have skin in between the toes. That skin in between the toes really helps him to swim along the water and to swim very, very quickly. Many people think that turtles are a very slow moving animal. Well, they really haven't met an aquatic turtle because they can swim quite fast. They have this very streamlined type of shell and on the front of their claws, they have these little tiny claws or toenails in front of their feet that help them to move along and come up onto a rock or a log and they're going to bask. So they're going to come out onto those areas and bask in the sun to warm up. Now check out his mouth. He's got this cute little mouth. Turtles don't really have any teeth. They have a little beak that helps them to grab their food. And if he was out in the pond, he would look for insects and worms and fish, and maybe some plants or vegetation to eat as well. Well, when he grabs his food, such as a worm or a fish that might be too big, he'll then take his little feet, his claws, and kind of put it up against his mouth with his fingernails, and kind of break those pieces up a little bit so he could eat them just so. So this little painted turtle, like I said, is one of the more common turtles here in Ocean County. Um, and they have a really neat way of camouflaging themselves. Do you see how this turtle is really dark on his back, but very light on the bottom? Well, this camouflage is called counter shading. And this can be seen in many aquatic animals to help them to camouflage themselves. So if you think of a shark, or if you think of a penguin, they both have very dark backs and very light bellies. So this counter shading kind of helps them to um, swim through the water. If a seagull was flying overhead and they looked down on that pond or lake, 
And what they would see is the dark back of the turtle blending in with the darkness of the pond. If a large fish was swimming underneath and would look up to that turtle, they would see that light color of the bottom of the shell called the plastron, and it would blend in with the sky and the reflection coming up from under it. So this little turtle has a really great way of protecting himself besides his shell. Okay, let me take out one of my other friends. <laughs> Check out this guy. He's a little bit bigger than that painted turtle is. This one is called an eastern box turtle. Now, eastern box turtles live a little bit different places than the painted turtles do. They're going to live in the forests. Um, you're going to find them more in maybe grassy areas or around schoolyards or around your homes. And they're a turtle that really isn't going into the water for, to swim. They're going to go maybe sit in a puddle to drink or to take a bath, but they're not going to swim great distances in the water. And their bodies really aren't made for it. If we go back to our painted turtle, see how thin and streamlined the painted turtle shell is? The box turtle shell is much more higher domed, and really their bodies are much more useful on land. Check out those feet. They have really big, thick, scaly feet that help them to climb and to dig, and those big nails that help them to dig and look for food or even to lay eggs. He's checking you guys out. Check out the color of that turtle's eyes. Now, box turtles have a really neat thing. Uh, their eye color actually helps to tell if they're a boy or a girl. So if you see a very reddishy color eyes on a box turtle, it's actually a boy or a male box turtle. But if you see more darker brown color to their eyes, it means they're a girl. So that's kind of a little fun fact that we have with our, our box turtles. Now, turtles do have this wonderful shell on their body. This shell um, is something that they're born with. They don't go find their shell like a hermit crab. They're not going to change their shell when they get bigger. It will actually grow as they grow. So this shell is a part of their body. So if their shell ever gets cracked or broken, it could definitely hurt the turtle or even kill the turtle. Now, right over here... I have a great turtle shell of our snapping turtle, which is a really large aquatic turtle. And you can see the underside of their shell, that's what would be under here, is a backbone or a vertebrae. So we have a backbone or a vertebrae that keeps us standing tall and sitting up straight. Well, so does the turtle. It's actually fused to their shell. So this is truly something that they can't just run out and get something to eat and come back into their shell. It is definitely a part of their body. So sometimes people find turtles and they'll often come to Cat Island or give us a call um, saying that they found a turtle and they want to bring it here and oftentimes they want to release it here in the park. They just feel like the park is safer than maybe their backyard. Well it actually isn't. Box turtles can live in your yards. They might have a home in the area and they know in that little area where they live where to find their food and water and shelter and maybe even a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So these turtles have a home range and um, it's an interesting thing with box turtles because they'll live in about a two acre area and they don't really ever leave that two acre area. So if you remove them from that environment and you bring them somewhere else like at Cadiz Island, then it really stresses out the turtle. And stress causes them to have illnesses or diseases, and oftentimes the turtle can die being pulled out from its environment. So we always say, if you find a box turtle, it's always best to keep it where it is and let it be. Also, turtles don't make the best kind of pets either. Many times people want to bring them inside and take good care of them, which is true, but turtles really need um, a well-balanced diet that's designed for them. Box turtles eat different things than painted turtles do. They need to have adequate lighting and adequate heat. And if you don't give this uh, enough to these turtles, then it can really affect the health of these turtles. And box turtles can live to be about 40 years old or so. So it's really a commitment if you decide to take a box turtle as a pet. So here in New Jersey, it is actually illegal to buy or sell turtles in our state. You can possess certain turtles 
if you have a permit from the state of New Jersey, but otherwise you're really not supposed to possess turtles as pets. Now years ago, you used to be able to buy turtles in the pet stores. In fact, you would find little painted turtles in pet stores, little ones of these guys, and it would often come with a bowl with a palm tree and a rock. And that little bowl and palm tree and a rock was a great little pet, little turtle starter pet, but they were finding out that children were getting sick from their turtles. Now turtles do carry in their digestive system a bacteria called salmonella. So you may have heard of salmonella with uh, reference to bad chicken or bad eggs. Well, this is a bacteria that helps them to digest their food. So when they do eat, particularly the painted turtles, they're gonna go to the bathroom in their water. And they were finding that kids were playing with their turtles, not realizing the bacteria was often on their shell, who would then not go wash their hands and go have lunch and then they were getting sick from that bacteria. So that's one of the reasons why turtles are not purchased or sold in uh, the state of New Jersey. Okay, now I did say I have another type of reptile here with me that wasn't a dinosaur or an alligator, but I do have one of our slithery friends, one of our snakes. We have about eight snakes here at the Nature Center. <laughs> And if you can see what he's doing, he's got his tongue out. He's taking it in and out. He's trying to figure out what's going on. He knows he's not in his exhibit anymore. And he's just trying to see where he's at. So this is called a black rat snake. And black rat snakes use their tongue, like many of the other snakes do, to sense what's around them. Now that tongue has a little bit of a forked uh, shape to it. It's shaped kind of like a V. And you'll see he's really getting going now, trying to see, well, who's, who's he with? Is he with Miss Nikki, Miss Denise, Miss Megan? He's checking things out. So that forked tongue actually catches little bits of air molecules in between. Then it brings it inside of his head to a special organ called the Jacobson's organ. And that organ actually helps him to determine what he's smelling. Is it something he's familiar with? Is it food? Is it something he should be afraid of? Now they do have noses just like you and me. They breathe oxygen just like we do. They just smell a little bit differently uh, than we would smell. So in general, snakes do have eyes to see, but they don't see quite as well as we do. They see shapes and shadows, but not so much uh, specific details. They do have tiny ears, but they really rely more on feeling and vibration. So if you were walking along a trail and there was a black rat snake maybe hiding under some logs, he would certainly feel the tap of your feet coming down that trail before he would really hear you. And that would cause the snake to really kind of wonder what's going on. Now many, for many people, snakes get them very, very nervous. They think that they're going to maybe come after them, uh, maybe definitely to eat, try and eat them or bite them, um, and, or that they can be venomous as well. So luckily here in New Jersey, um, especially in Ocean County, there really aren't many venomous snakes around here. There's the timber rattlesnake that can be found in parts of Ocean County, but not very common. And there's the northern copperhead that actually lives more in the rocky parts of northern New Jersey. So around here, it'd be very rare to kind of come across a venomous snake. Let me show you real quick. I do have an example. This is from a rattlesnake, a timber rattlesnake, and you can see its teeth with the little fangs that are out that used to um, inject the venom to kind of paralyze their prey so then they could eat them. Well, most of the snakes, or all the snakes we have here at the Nature Center, don't really eat that way. Uh, what they do do is they have a mouth with lots of little tiny teeth. We offer them a mouse, that's a frozen mouse, um, into a feeding tank, and they kind of grab that mouse. They might wrap their body around it and constrict or tighten. And they're not trying to really squeeze that mouse. Um, they're actually just trying to, to hold it so that the mouse will pass out or slow down so then they can eat that mouse whole. So they have lots of little tiny teeth in their mouth. Um, many quite people ask us, well, have they, you ever been bitten by a snake? And I have been a couple of times. And it's usually done by accident. 
the snake is usually startled or nervous, or it also thinks it's about to eat. It might confuse my hand with a mouse in many circumstances. So in general, snakes really don't want to bite something that's much bigger than they are. Those tiny teeth can be broken very easily or actually pulled out if they bit something much bigger than them. So snakes will do many other things before biting. Typically, if a snake is hiding somewhere and you stumble across it, they're going to run away, number one. Um, what they might do is they might rattle their tail, and black rat snakes will do this. They'll actually shake the tip of their tail, and if they shake that against pine needles or leaf litter, it sounds very much like a rattlesnake. So they kind of mimic or pretend to be a rattlesnake to scare you away. They might do something called musking, which they actually send out a very stinky smell. Not as bad as a skunk, but still a stinky smell. And then the last thing they really want to do is bite. Like I said, they rather do all those things first to scare you away than have to sit there and um, maybe lose a tooth in your finger or such. <laughs> So Sokar is his name, and he is a black rat snake, which is one of the uh, largest snakes here in New Jersey. They actually can grow to be about six feet long. And we have this great little thing here at the Nature Center of a, of a, a skin of a black rat snake that is just about six feet that you could come and measure yourself up to. So this guy isn't quite there yet. He's probably closer to five, four and a half, five feet long. Um, he is still kind of young and still kind of growing, but when he does get full grown, he could be just as tall as that snake up there. Now snakes, as I mentioned before, have eyes and ears and lungs like we do. They do smell a little bit differently, but for the most part, they do have a lot of the same organs that we have. They do have a backbone that goes from their head all the way down to their tail, and they have a tail. Do you know snakes have a tail? Believe it or not, people think they are one big tail, but they're really not. Their tail starts from right about here and goes all the way down. So this spot here is a little bit different than the rest of their scales, and that's called their cloaca, and that's where everything comes out. And this is their tail down here at the end. So they have a backbone and ribs that go all the way down, lots of muscles that go all the way through that help them to move, help them to climb. Black rat snakes are excellent climbers. So I bet you didn't know that snakes could climb even though they don't have any arms or legs. Well, they're really good at climbing trees. Uh, this guy could probably climb up the trees that are above me and go sit in the branches where they like to be. So they like to tend to be a little bit taller places than some of the snakes that might be a little bit lower underground. As I mentioned, they have lungs and a heart, a circulatory system, a stomach, intestines, very similar to what we have. They're just arranged a little bit differently. So right over here you can see a little chart of our snakes that we have here. You can see how long their lungs are, their heart, liver, stomach, and many of the same digestive organs that we have as well and even their kidneys. It's just spread out down their body. So if these snakes are ever stepped on or run over by a car or a dog gets at them, it's definitely something that could hurt and definitely can injure them. We had mentioned before that reptiles are cold-blooded creatures. Now this doesn't really mean that their blood is actually cold, but that their body temperature is always changing. So if it's a nice warm day, and it's about 90 degrees outside, this snake's body temperature is going to be about 90 degrees. If it's a cooler day, about 60 degrees, and the sun is out, they might go sit underneath the sun um, to warm up on that cool day. So snakes and turtles and other reptiles actually have to move their environment to change their body temperature. Now we are, are mammals, and as mammals, our body temperature stays the same. We're warm-blooded. Uh, creatures. So it'll stay 98.6 unless you have a fever then it's going to go up. But we don't need to kind of move around to get warm. Sometimes it feels good definitely to come into a warmer place than colder. But reptiles really depend on where they're located to keep them warm or cool. So these guys often in the winter time will burrow underground and they'll actually hibernate through the winter 
till the warmer days of spring come and then they'll merge and then can be found basking or sunning themselves in a spot to warm up. Well, I'd like to thank you for visiting me today and learning a little bit of our reptiles that we have here at Caddis Island County Park. Um, come visit us at the Cooper Environmental Center and have a good day.